Okay, welcome. My name is Rick Tasse, and I'm here to demonstrate what a VR classroom could look like. Currently, I'm going to use this program, which is available online immediately. Actually, actually, we can start using it right now if we wish. It's called Engage. Engage creates VR environments where instructors can teach their material and import models and videos and use some LMS. And I'll show you all this in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to do, this here is where you end up starting. This is where once you logged in, uh, you end up here. And then you can either join a session, start a session. If you're an instructor, you create and edit. Uh, start a session could be even a student who wants to uh, create a place where other students uh, can meet up and study or discuss topics at hand. Um, and then other students, once this session has been started, it can be open to other students or instructors and they may join that particular section. Um, good idea, for instance, would be when it is, uh, as an instructor myself, uh, if I want to set up a Q&A session, they don't have to come into school or on the weekends. They don't have to come in on the weekends like they used to do. Now they can just connect from home and I would be there in this environment with them when they can start asking me questions so we can schedule Q&A sessions before an exam or before a lab or something like that. Here, so here we have content. All kinds of public content right there, public. And uh, you can see lessons, experiences, recordings, and these are always being updated. And you can see that there's a lot of people involved with this. We have Oxford University using the very same environment or platform of Engage VR. Locations, if I want a lower vocation, I have multiple locations to pick from. Warehouse facility, that's actually a pretty good one for the AR VR. Um, exercise we did or project we did for uh, Jervis Webb and we had created our own little warehouse meanwhile this warehouse already exists um, it's only available to a pro license and I have a pro license so I could use this if I wanted to so I'm gonna go back here as an instructor of course we have to create our class and our content and the videos and the PDFs and the PowerPoints and all that stuff we can do that here or online on their website and save it up to their location and use it inside a classroom. Um, my avatar, well, there I am. You can pick standard avatars. You can, uh, if I wanted to create a new one, I could pick a female. I, could, I tried, I picked the biggest body they, they offered. Obviously I'm a little bigger than this, but underneath all this, there's that. And if you look closely, that is actually my face up there. They allow you to bring in a photo and they will use that photo and place it on the face of your avatar, which is pretty cool, I think. So I'm gonna save and continue that. Events, well, you can schedule events like a class, a day, a time. Uh, you can schedule uh, a Q&A session. Students can schedule a study session where other students can jump in and with or without me or the instructor, they can study and ask questions and discuss the topics at hand um, hosting if you're hosting the session this would be uh, all your sessions that you're hosting attending are the ones that you're obviously attending and the ones that you're interested in there are no events to display right now but if i went to live sessions no live sessions in progress right now but i could start one if i wanted to in case there's a, like an emergency q a session or something anyway so i'm gonna go back and that pretty much it here controls this is to show you that you can use vive oculus a gamepad if you don't have enough space and you have to be seated down which is a good idea in the morning when you get up you want to have your coffee and go to class you stick with your seated mode you can either use a computer or a laptop to access the same classroom you won't have the immersion that these guys would have um, one thing that isn't showing here is the windows media headsets which is what i have I have a Samsung Odyssey, which is a Windows Media Mixed Reality headset, but it works just as well as any of these, and I have full immersion. I'm in this beautiful little warehouse. I've got, I guess that would be a full-size T-Rex. Or is that a bit big, I think? Oh, we'll see, anyway. Um, so, 
going back to here I'm going to start an event what I've done previously to this is I created a session I created a lecture to convince or maybe describe and demo what this stuff can do what this program how this program can be used and why it might be beneficial to instructors or some or to be used by instructors or to for Mohawk to create their own version of engage so let's go we'll start a session I know I'm in a classroom lecture so I'm in this here it's just me right now And here I am, I have landed in a student spot. I can move forward to the professor spot. But since I've already created a lecture, I'm no longer going to be a professor. I'm going to be a student. So I am going to pick a seat because I'm really keen on learning. And I pick a front seat where I could see everything. Now, as a student, if I had missed this class and, I, and my instructor had recorded it, I could easily access it and rewatch it over and over again. As an instructor, I could start a new recording or I can load a recording, which is what I'm going to do. And my last recording I did to demo all of this is called the VR Classroom. I'm going to select it and I'm going to load it. And as a student, I will be able to watch the entire lecture, even though, unfortunately, I won't be able to interact with anybody because it's already been done and it's history now and so I won't be able to ask questions in a recorded this is you'll see it later on and explain later on why that might be beneficial so hold on there I am hi my name is Richard Tasse some of you who know me know that I've been doing a lot of research a lot of promoting a lot of pushing for uh, Kamaha College to look seriously at developing a VR classroom or VR class college or campus, if you like. That would probably be in the future. But right now, let's just talk about this VR classroom. What you are witnessing here right now is one such VR classroom. If you were here, you could see me in real time and we could interact in real time within this classroom, even though we may be completely miles apart in real life. So. This virtual classroom is created by Engage VR. I'm not saying that I want to promote Engage VR as our. See, I can pause it. I have a tablet on my right hand, or I have the menu on my left hand where I can do all my stuff and I can start and run and pause it. And while it's paused, let me just close this. I can move around without disrupting the lecture and take my time. And look what's up there, if there's anything up there. Turn around, see the students that were here during the recording. But like again, I won't be able to interact with them because I wasn't here at the time the recording was made. I can't ask him any questions. So if I, it's depending on my, on the videos to do my classes, that would be the downfall there because I can't interact with the teacher. So anyways, let's continue with the lecture. VR classroom and platform. I'm using it as an inspiration for Mohawk College to spend some time, effort, and investment in developing its own version of Engage VR. That is proprietary, of course, for branding purposes, for uh, corporate purposes, for just identity purposes. Why? What advantages would you have with the VR classroom? Well. There are disadvantaged people out there that cannot come to class, that cannot come to school. There are bedridden individuals or wheelchair individuals or those who are just too physically disabled to come to an environment where they can have a good education. This eliminates that. What else can you do? Remote locations, dangerous locations, worldwide access, and of course, you can offer a recognized accreditation with diplomas and stuff like that from Mohawk College, which is a well-known college. You can offer education to correctional facilities for those individuals who want to um, rehabilitate themselves and, and learn a new trade and learn a new skill so that when they go out, they have something to work with or other social programs, programs for the elderly or for the disadvantaged youths, or even for minorities that require a certain situation where they need to attend a VR classroom. 
The idea is that Mohawk College can offer an education to anybody, anywhere, worldwide, without limitations. And this technology allows that to happen. The only thing that will be needed, of course, is access to a computer system. Now, when I say computer system, I do not only mean virtual reality glasses. This environment is accessible with either HTC Vive, Oculus, or what I'm using, which is a Samsung Windows Media uh, headset, but it's also accessible with a laptop or a computer. You won't have the immersion. That um, I've looked into it. I've yet to find anything that says it would be accessible through a mobile phone or anything like that, or can it be used with a, a Google um, VR box or something like that, something that's cheap. So I'm not sure if it's yet available on a mobile telephone, whether it's Samsung or iPhone or whatever. So that might be one drawback. But if you have that, chances are you probably have a computer and you may not need to use it on a phone. Anyway, so here we go. What I'm having right now, you won't feel like you're in the classroom, but you will be in real time witnessing the lecture from your laptop or from your computer monitor at home or wherever you are. So imagine the building cost of this room. It is basically 3D modeling. We have lights, we have a projector, we have seats, we have walls, we have we have a learning environment. We have whiteboards or blackboards in this case. We have a projector screen, speakers and that, but no electricity needed, no code, no building code, none of that stuff that would be required if you were to build a brick and mortar classroom. And the beauty of it is, is that this room has a one-time cost. It's built once. You want to build another one? Yeah, click a button and you have your second classroom. You can't do that, obviously, in brick and mortar. You have so many things to worry about. You've got your plumbing, you've got your heat and hydro, you've got um, safety issues. So there's a lot involved, obviously. I'm not going to go through the whole list. I'm sure there's a lot more than I'm not mentioning. In building a classroom for students, as opposed to a room like this, where they are literally at home in their kitchen or living room, and they're attending this classroom from that location. What else is it good for? Students, transportation. A lot of my students, I, I teach over at the South Creek campus, they're coming from all over the place. They're electricians, and they're coming from Brantford, they're coming from St. Catharines or Oakville or Burlington. I get some people coming in from Sudbury, sometimes they're still St. Marie. It's a long drive for these people to come to our college. This will allow them to attend at least the lecture portions of the college from home without having to worry about gas, parking, uh, dangerous uh, driving or um, accidents, snow days, adverse weather conditions. It is actually safer to come to a VR classroom than it would be to come to a real classroom. Plus, it's a lot cheaper too because you don't have to worry about parking. And the other thing about that is all that parking space that you could be saving might be used for maybe development of, of uh, facilities or lab facilities or um, exercise facilities like uh, uh, Alan Bradley or David Bradley, sorry. <laughs> um, let's see, where are we now? The other thing that this is good for is not only for lectures, but it can also be used for students who want to get together after school who are so far apart that they can't, but in class or in a lab, they were partners and they want to talk to each other and they want to study together. This offers them an environment that they can go to and chat with one or all of the classmates and have discussions and ask each other questions and help each other out before an exam, help each other out before a lab, that sort of thing. And this is just a uh, uh, this is a lecture room, but there are many other places that these students can meet up. So, also, it can be part of the program 
where the instructor can schedule a Q&A session. So he doesn't have to come to school to have a Q&A session. He can just stay at home, open up the classroom, schedule a Q&A session with the students, and if anybody has any questions, they can come into class from wherever they are and start asking questions and, and uh, maybe get in more information on the course content. So, disadvantages? Well, for distance education, for instance, you're gonna have to find places where um, you can, you know, you can establish an approved testing centers where students can go, their identity can get verified, and they can write their exams or whatever it is they have to do with someone, an invigilator of some sort that has been approved by Moore College. And then that test can be either through a computer system, get immediately submitted to the instructor, or it can be done on paper and sent through snail mail. Um, another problem would be student identity. People come into class or people come into quizzes or exams, we have to find a way to know that it's really them. This is why you would need an accredited location to monitor these types of situations where the person's identity can be verified. Uh, the other issue is like this right now is a recording. I have recorded this entire session to be viewed for later, which is what I'm going to do. The actual video you're going to watch is the one that I'm acting as a student watching me do this very lecture right now. So there is an issue, though, because what happens is students may end up depending on these recorded lectures instead of coming to class at a scheduled time in real time so where they can interact with the instructor and ask questions and stuff. If they depend on a recording, they will not have the interaction. They will not be able to ask any questions. However, it may be their way to cheat their way out of a attending a classroom if they've got other things to do. Of course, if it is important, they have to leave and they, can, and they must miss the class. Well, it's okay. We still have it recorded where they can come back later and review the class. And I'll show you how that's done. And I want to come back as a student. So the other problem, of course, is hands-on. Right now, this is simulation. It's a VR classroom, there's nothing that you can touch or move or, 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 you know, interact with physically, okay? We have a lot of stuff to hear for lectures, but we don't have anything that you can, like, wiring or hammering or anything like that, and that is the issue with VR. However, there is something that can be done, and I will show you examples of this later, that you can have in a VR classroom, which may help with the practical part or portion of a, of a class. Um, you can have simulations. You can have a broad, you can bring in a classroom like this, a simulation that is interactive. Um, they can prepare it. It could be like, for instance, wiring up a mortar. You could have a mortar panel that's simulated right here and the student can look at it and with interaction can learn how to wire properly, can see how it's installed, can see how it looks and, have, and practice with it so that when they actually go to the real life lab they're looking at this and they're not lost they know they've seen it before they can wire it and they're not afraid of it anymore whereas if they didn't have that option when they walk inside that motor control panel for the very first time they have no idea what they're looking at and the teacher has to go through all this so it could be part of the program where they have to complete the simulation and get marked on it before they come to the lab class there could be many purposes for that but it still allows us to bring something into a classroom or into an environment. It doesn't have to be into a lecture room. It could be an environment, the aquatic, you can go underwater or, or you can go on a mountain or your ge geological site if you're studying geology. And you can go to these locations and, and be there as opposed to just being in this boring little classroom. If you're studying uh, planetary systems, of course, VR classrooms could be space itself. And I'll, I'll show, I may show you an example of that later on. Um, so, the hands-on work issue can be somewhat mitigated by simulations, okay? And I, there, are, there are a lot of simulations out there, especially in chemistry and medical stuff. Okay. What do we have here? 
in this classroom. And what good is it? Well, if you look around, you've got this whiteboard stuff. I can go to this whiteboard. And, oh, by the way, let me mention what this is. This is a tablet. It's what I use to control my classroom, okay? You have one too. You have one too. If you click on you, uh, look at your left hand, you'll see here on your controller the word tablet. There's a button there. You push that, and the tablet appears, disappears. And that's what I see. Right now, what you see on mine is black. You have no idea what I'm looking at. But you can look at your own and do your own thing. If the tablet is a pain, on the right hand, you have a menu. If you pop up the menu, the tablet disappears. And now I have the exact same thing, but it's in a menu format. It's more stable. The, it's easier to manipulate your cursor, and it's larger. So it's a lot easier to control. So if I move this here, I'm looking at my notes right now. I can move this up and down and select. So you have that option. You don't see this. This is mine. It follows me around wherever I go. And here it is still here. If I go back to there, it follows me. It's right here. It will do the same for you. This is the right-hand menu. And here we have the left hand tablet. I'm going to prefer the menu because it is a more stable thing. And plus, it doesn't impede your view of me because it's invisible to me. So, behind me, we have the board. Now, if I go up to the board, I can do things. Now, this board is cool, but it has its issues. For instance, if I want to, let's say I want to create a PN junction or die, which is what I teach at the college. Now I'm the portrait. Okay. And then draw some plus signs. And then do it here. And then do some images. Representing the electron. And let's say, let's go with the blue with the dots of facing. And how about white with some wires? And what we've got here, typically one of the features is the diode, the P injunction of the diode. So using white, we say P and junction. Writing is a little bit difficult to get used to. And the bottom and the diode. There you go. Should have seen me when I first started grabbing this. This is, this is pretty, this is neat compared to what I was doing before. So we have here a diode. At the bottom here, I can take a snapshot of it and save it. Yes, and it will be listed in my, I can find this in my folder. And it asks if I want to send a screenshot to you, anyone else? I could if I want to, but right now I don't need to, nobody's here, so I'm just going to say no. And then close that, and then turn around, and come back to my center stage. I'm just going to make it and the proper here. So, that's the left black. Problem is, is I just can't I just can't erase this piece or just that plus sign. It allows me to erase color. Of course, Windows MR, unlike the Oculus and the Vive, doesn't have ceiling uh, trackers, which is why you see that my arm is definitely not in the proper position, and I should be in great pain right now. But what it is is that the headset ha cannot see my controller which is down by my side at that point and uh, so it doesn't really know where my hand is and it's making a rather unfortunate guess so please just uh, forgive me for that it's uh, an issue with the the, the the Windows Mixed Reality the inability to control this tracker when it's out of sight like behind my head or down by my waist or something okay so sorry about that I choose white all the white will disappear when I do. If I choose green, all the green, it doesn't matter where you are on the entire board. All three of them here. 
there was any white on any of these boards and I get to be it all was white. I think that is a problem. It's not very well done. I think we should have an eraser is what they really need so we can erase parts of it as opposed to using the entire color. And that's pretty poor. So where am I here? I guess in my notes. And Ah, do that when I'm doing recording, quizzes, and testing, and pop questions. Yes, I can do that here too. Now let's go to the projector. The project what I'm doing as I'm doing a lecture up there, as you can see, I'm following a set of notes that I that I started with, and. I created this online, saved it, and it is, it is available to me while I'm doing the class. Right now, as you can see, if you're interested in this, I may be able to give it to you, show some benefits and stuff like that. Um, why Mohawk, society and financial disadvantages, there's quite a few of them, disadvantages, features, projector screen, models, in conclusion. Okay, so this is the notes that I'm following what you're seeing up there. So just to let you know that that's why I refer to the tablet so often. So I'm going to go back to recording and continue to play. Up there, I can have plenty of things up there. Let's go with media. Uh, I'm going to put my media. I'm going to show you, boom. Here we go, Mohawk College, I'm going to log in, and I'm actually going to switch over to this guy because it's more stable. Plus, you can't see what I'm writing, so let me see this. Let's see. Okay, password. Enter, log in, keyboard, and there you go. My eLearn website. You can see that in, uh, in October. Yes, and sometimes it does that too. So let's go back to here load the recording and I don't understand why it does that but once in a while it will do that on the recording and yeah kind of have to my name is Richard Tasse there we go you see that we are now in the immigration certificate program I click on content and there it is Now, issue here, unrecorded video, which is why it's a good idea to attend class, as opposed to just depending on recording. When I hit play on this YouTube video, I hear it. Anybody in class right now would also hear it. But if you're listening to a recording, you will not hear this audio. You will be able to see the video, but you will not see any audio. So that's an issue, but I guess it, it encourages you to attend class as opposed to just depending on the recordings. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. So, of course, you could also just go online you're on your laptop or on your computer and play it. Put this on pause, play the video, and then you'll be able to hear it. Then you come back to this on and unpause it and continue forward. Well, we have that. We can use eLearn or in the future Canvas whenever we get there. And uh, they'll be up there from students to see and their, you know, their own eLearn or Canvas homepage for their course will be accessible to them. So I'm going to 
get out of this and actually let's try something here. I'm going to share my desktop, meaning that my computer itself is sitting on my desk. I'm wearing a headset. And I can't see it through my headset. So I have no idea what my computer is showing. But if I did this, um, go to the new media. How about low media? Yes, share desktop. Okay. I'm going to share my desktop. And now, there you go. You see it? That is what's on my computer right now. You see a lot of games up there. I'm a little bit of a gamer. So I'm going to minimize this. Well, I can't right now because I can't control anything. I'm using my VR handles here. So I can't really do anything up there. However, I do have this enable VR control button. Now I can control my desktop. I can move that over here. I can minimize that. There you go. Secure. There you go. And here I am. I have my desktop. Now, what I want to show you is something that is pretty cool, especially for the Eon personnel that might be watching this. I can click on my website. I can go to that's an engage website. I go there. Engage again. You can come here and make your notes and make your downloads and your PDFs. And I'll just look for creating my notes for this demo. If I open that up, I go to let's develop AVR platform login. I can get into AVR platform. You'll see it up there. I can see it here on my little thing. You won't see it, but you can see it up there. And if I click on create AVR, here I am. Got my license on here, just that say, and I can go to content. Since I've already done that, I'm going to load something I've already got going here. So I'm going to minimize my, my internet website here, my Google Chrome. I'm going to open up this guy. And here is full screen. A lesson I created in the VR as I was playing around on using a motor because, again, I'm an electrician, and it's part of what I teach. And see, notice how I can still manipulate it, even in VR, using my fan controllers as opposed to using a mouse. Those that are using a laptop or a computer will probably be able to do this, of course, with your mouse and laptop or your keyboard. Now, everything works as it should. If I blow it up, I can move it around. There you go. Double click. I got that baby. Notice that there's got labels on it. I can spread that out into its various components. All right, select that guy. Look at its components. Put that up. The only thing I wish we could do here is drag it out into the middle of the floor. And that would be really awesome. Maybe our 3D VR could do something like that. Or work together where we can take 3D VR in a VR environment like this classroom. And pull out the actual model and bring it into this VR classroom. But I can't see why that would be impossible. It might not be easy, but it would definitely be possible. Okay, so you, what I'm trying to prove here is that we can use Creator VR in here as well. PowerPoints, PDF files, eLearn, everything is available to you as it would be in a normal classroom. So, okay, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen or my Desktop, rather, you know that. Now you don't see my desktop anymore. Go to my media. Go to uh, Law College website. And there we go. Close that and move that there. So, that's pretty cool. We got a lot of that done, but there's something else I have to show you. Something that if you had a brick and mortar classroom, you could never do. Okay. I am going to let's see here. I'm going to pick uh, this guy. Cool. It's a brown bear. What can I do with this brown bear? I can shoot him way up there. I can bring him close. Drop him down. Maybe a little back a bit. 
I want to increase the size. It's more like a prehistoric cave bear. Or bring him down. I'm going to put him over there for now, get him out of the way. And just a little bit more. He's right like, there, you go. And right there. Yeah, now he's happy. Did you do that in a real classroom? How about this guy? Uh, Ah, gosh darn. Load recording. I have no idea why that happens. It's a bug. And I'm probably. Hi. Closer, drop them off there. Can you do that in a real classroom? Yeah. Can't do that. Now, even as it's paused, you can see that the animation is still running. It allows me to go and have a closer look without disrupting the lecture. He's paused right now, and his arm should be in terrible pain, but yeah, that looks like me, all right. And here's the bear. I can go around on the bear. Right, and uh, go up the stairs, turn around, and so you see, this is something that can't be done in a regular classroom. And the students can have anything, we can bring anything into this classroom at the cost of developing it as a 3D model or an interactive model or animated model, like these are. Um, and there you go, you can bring anything inside this classroom. So I'm going to continue this lecture. Now, the problem with these guys is I can't rotate them. I can increase the size, I can put them at a distance, and, but I can't rotate them. I, I can't place them in a different position. They always come in the same position. So if I select him, I can shrink him again. And closer. And then move them up to individual students. Like that. Can't do that in real life. So I'm going to put them right there. Actually, I'm going to get rid of them. Leave them there just for decorations. How about something different? How about uh, category? We change category. Let's go to objects and we'll pick a Greece statue. There she is. I can put them over there, shrink her, or make her bigger. Or I could bring it closer, put it on the floor, and make it really big. And then now we can move around, take a look, close look at that. Now, imagine if this was a jet inch, millions of dollars I could bring into the classroom, the click of a trigger or a button. Right? You can make it interactive as well. You can have a lot of animation. Um, all that stuff works in this area. I can bring in shuttle craft. I can put you inside a nuclear power plant where you can get uh, watch it running without getting your radiator going in the dark at night. So you just uh, get rid of this screen statue. Okay. So this is what you can do with the 3D model. Let me pull up my notes. I know where we are. Okay. We can do create a VR. Oh, you can also access objects. All we want to do is create our own version, get it access to our uh, PDF files or our PowerPoints and stuff like that. So, here I am. And if I share desktop, I might be able to do it. Let's just try that. I'll go to Load Media and I'm going to share desktop. And go up there. And if I minimize that, Control. Close that actually. Yes, and exit. 
Now I'm back here. And access. No one drive from here. Open the documents. Let's see, the uh, document there goes up. Can you should buy a program? What's the JPEG? Come on here. Again, another with the issue with this program is that when you first call something up, sometimes all you get is a blank screen. If you shut it down and open it up again, it comes uh, to what it should be. So, ah, oh, there it is. Now there's a picture of the commission by program that we did. For the service web tour. So, like I said, once you have access to your computer, you can share your desktop computer. You can pretty much load anything like that. Okay, so you can like build a desktop for your chair. Back up over here, check my notes. All right, well, that's it. In conclusion, we've seen what we can do in here. We've seen the potentials. I'm sure there's a lot of ideas out there that you could be doing. Um, when I come back, I'm going to come back to record as a student. I'm going to call up this lecture, and uh, you're going to hear this whole lecture. And uh, during the lecture, I will be pausing and moving and, and showing you as a student what, that, what you can do, uh, including logging in. Uh, going to different environments, okay, so this is only the one environment. Unfortunately, I can't change environments right now while I'm recording because it kills the recording, so I'm not going to, I can't do that right now. I can't show you what other environments are doing during this particular recording. So I'm going to close this recording now, and I thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll consider what I'm proposing here. So with the recording, hit stop recording right now. Ta da! So that was a lecture that was pre recorded, and I watched it as a student. You could tell I paused it, and uh, I could study whatever more closely. Uh, there's a lot that we can do. That uh, AVR platform that we saw earlier, uh, we can take that model that's in AVR, and I can bring it into here as a model itself without the AVR platform. So here are other options that you can have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this session, exit, exit session, and it'll take me back to the main menu. Here I am at the main menu. If you wish, you can go online and you can view this. If you have a pair of uh, uh, VR glasses, you can watch this, enter the session, I'm going to quickly fast forward to this guy. I, it's loading content, so I'm now going to be in the classroom that somebody else created. And this video is to show you, give you an idea of, of uh, what's possible. Um, a little bit better than what I did, because he actually records changing scenes in the middle of it. I don't know how they did that. Maybe they did it by video editing, but uh, now it is updating. What is going on here? Okay, loading content still, and boom, blank. Welcome. Whoa. We have everything that you would expect in a regular classroom, and Engage's whole body tracking allows for a natural. So we already know about experience. this stuff. Well, here you are your students. The interactive whiteboard. So and when this was recorded, let me just uh, of media on the big screen. Let me just, uh, we understand as educators, media. you have already invested time and effort. Pause. So obviously these people were here while he was recording this um, classroom. Those just entered. So 
It looks pretty cool. If you move up, you see that even though they're paused, they're still blinking. <laughs> it's like this really kind of creepy, actually. Um, and he's looking at me. I'm over here. So I'm going to continue with this. And I'll be jumping forward every now and then. Um, he's just going to introduce what you can do. In building your course content. And this is where Engage excels. There's no need to redo or reformat your work. You can access it all. Move on to anything you can put on your environment. Here's a snapshot of one I built earlier. Here we go. So he had created this classroom. High school math teacher fired our imagination by explaining how a quadratic equation described a curve, and that curve could be used to guide a rocket or a missile. Actually, yeah, let's have a go now. Fire! Here are some experiences we created. Apollo 11, Houston, we're go for a docking over. Whoa. Welcome to your virtual classroom. I really am in space. What if you could take your gonna... students to space? <sighs> to see the Apollo mission firsthand. That's awesome. Okay, our flight controller is gonna go for landing. Retro, go. Rhino, go. Titan, go. Telcom, go. GNC, go. Econ, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Or back to World War II over Germany. Now, right behind. Uh, landing, how far away is it? How far away is it? Uh -huh. Ooh. He dropped down. down. Did you shoot him down? Look at the angle of our ship. But it's unsinkable. The Titanic. Surely? She'll sink. But the watertight door should keep her afloat. Or even back to the Titanic to experience how it felt. She'll founder. It's just a matter of time. All from your own virtual classroom. Oh, shh. There's a presentation in progress. So, what you're seeing right now is he is presenting a previous recording. So, but this is a recording. So, he's recording of a recording. And since I'm recording this, I've got <laughs> essentially three recordings going on at the same time. It's pretty awesome. So, look at the floor. This is what you can do inside a classroom like this. In a VR classroom, you can do so many interesting things which really will help with the learning process nice little bridge okay so i can't walk it oh well goldfish and it's all chinese so this is pretty good so let's continue on hello everybody back let's do here. some japanese study because he's looking today at we're me. going to learn about kanji that's part of the Japanese writing system. People can join your class from anywhere in the world. It's possible to have 36 people in a session at once. The lecturer can even mute the student's audio. I really wish I had that feature in the real 36. Sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot. Um, a typical lab class is 20, but sometimes I would lecture up to 60 or 80 students. So yeah this would have to be expanded or the classes would have to be divided which is something we do sometimes especially if we have a class of 80 students we usually divide them up into 240s but even 240s wouldn't fit in here this is their limitation this is why i think the moana college should be developing their own that is suited more suited to what we to what our requirements are what we need so continue on well much easier there's also a feature to record in fact that's me up there we're watching a recording of a class that I gave earlier. You can record everything, every movement, word, motion, what you write on the board, and you and your students can review it whenever you want to. Now that you've seen a little of what Engage can do, we look forward to seeing you there. Okay. Uh, where are you going to take me now? There still seems to be a little bit of time left. Okay, so that's where you can go. Download the program, install it, and then you can start attending sessions and classes and uh, start creating your own once you get permission from the from the um, the company itself. I have uh, I pay like five dollars a month to get the pro version, which allows me to do much more than just the regular version. As a student, you won't need the pro version. You'll probably just need the uh, 
um, regular version. But as an instructor, yeah, the pro version would probably be the best thing. So uh, what's that do? I'm going to get out of this session. I'm going to exit the session. Let's continue back to the main menu. Now we're at the, uh, we're now at the, sorry, here we are back at home base. And what else can I show you here? How about we take a look at some environments. We've already done the lecture hall. Dino Beach is there, Martian surface, shallow ocean. Let's see here, hub space. Um, I don't know what that room is, but I'd like to give that a try one day. Moon base, Titanic, that's the next location, something more exciting. Apollo moon. Um, Oxford mountain, oh no. Uh, let's go back. Um, training hub, virtual shop, conference hall, uh, talk stage. Oh, like a TED, TED, a TED stage. Oh, that'd be cool. Here we have high rise loft. Um, if I wanted other people to join me, I would have just said yes and I would have sent them a special code where they would uh, be able to join the same location that I'm in. Here is the nice little loft. So if students want to get together at night, like partners in a lab or uh, a few students who want to join up and study and discuss material and prepare for exams or labs, it's actually a nice, nice little atmosphere we got going here. But the reality is, I don't know, can we uh, really use this? Is there like a projector screen or um, I haven't really looked into this program as much. I need to do more studying on it if we plan to use it. I think we could probably put up a screen somewhere here. Um, but right now it's not suitable. I would probably prefer to go to a room where there is a screen and a projector that you can put up the internet and have some uh, something going on. If I click on this and I hit recording, I'm oh, not recording. If I hit media and I hit uh, uh, load media, how about my media? And I hit e-learn. Where does it pop up? Anywhere? Oh, look at that. There it is right there. So you can still study here. You can still use e-learn and the creator of VR, everything's right up there. That's awesome. Okay, so let's... Uh, Check something else out, maybe a little bit more exciting. Uh, again, if I wanted to create some content, I can create it right here. Besides the session. Back here, start a session. Let's go to this guy. No, just me right now. This is just an open hanger. A big open room warehouse you can put all kinds of stuff in here simulations the labs you can have anything you want here when we were working on the project for Jervis Webb uh, Daifuku we had to build a warehouse so we could put our things in like the unit build system have AGVs running around and so th that room had to be created by us whereas this already exists the only issue is of course bringing in models Right now with Engage, if you want to bring in your own models, you have to send it to them. They have to pre-approve it or optimize it or whatever they do to it. And then they can put it up on their model library. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can have. Different categories, video screens, effects, audio, life, all kinds of stuff in here. However, it's public. It's not yours. And as soon as they put it up on this, you lose proprietary ship on it. So that's why I insist that Mohawk must start thinking about developing their own virtual classroom scenarios because this is, I think, to me, is the future. So, um, as I was saying, models, Mohawk College, we have enough students coming in learning 3D animation and 3D modeling that we can start creating our own proprietary library of 3D models with animation or interaction. And then we can go even deeper, start creating simulated equipment that apply to our college and our course curriculum. 
So that's something. If we go through engage, we lose that ability, we lose the proprietorship, and so it's not really good. So, however, this is a great place. I love it. And if I wanted to create something here, and uh, let's see, exit, and hit switch to create content. Content creator. No, let's start clean. And so now I am content creator method. I can move around. I'm not really sure. I haven't really played for this that much, but I don't know what that does. Up, down. Tablet. Create a lesson. Lesson name type URL. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, if I go timeline, I can start timelines. I have a sequence of events that go on. I add a new event and a timeline to it. And manage the people, the people in the classroom. I can mute them. I can include them in recordings and media, or I can now allow them access to controlling this. What you know, so that's. Interesting. I've, like I said, I'm not really familiar with this part of it, but it looks pretty cool. So let's cancel or exit the session. Go back to the main menu. So I have nothing more to tell you. I think we've covered everything in this session. I believe that it is in Mohawk's best interest to have their own version of Engage, of a Mohawk college website or program that people install on their computer and they enter the Mohawk College VR campus, if you wish. Um, I think we have the technology, we have enough students, we have programmers, we even have the IDC and EON to help us create something like this. Uh, I believe it's possible and I believe it's important. I believe this is the future and I really think Mohawk College should start leading by creating their own VR classrooms and events. Um, thank you, my name is Richard Tasse, and I'd be very interested in discussing this further. Thank you very much. I'm gonna close this down now and say goodbye and thank you.